So yeah, I just opened the file. I was looking at like what we did last um, last time, and uh, yeah, there's uh, maybe one of two things I'm gonna want to maybe fix now. Things that I, uh, you know. If there's one thing that's like good about like working only once a week on a model like this, it's that um, you're kind of like forced to take a break and look at the, your work again. And uh, I find that it's actually a good way to um, get like a fresh view of like what you're you're doing and maybe take other considerations and whatnot. Hello, Jesus Valesco. Welcome to the stream. So yeah, just um, a few things I just saw, and I'm like, oh, you know what? Let's uh, let's fix those. Um, otherwise, uh, today we're gonna finish the forearm and uh, maybe start on the hand. And uh, and yeah, um, yeah, it's starting to. I'm starting to be pretty um, excited to uh, to start the next process feel like I've done enough modeling for this guy. I didn't realize that the um, mechanical arm would, would take that long, to be honest. But uh, it's just what it is, so there we go. And by the way, there will be a no, uh, no music on the stream today. I'm still working with music, but I'm not recording it. We're gonna try. Um, we're gonna try this. Feels people's reaction because uh, there's uh, there's been a lot of comments about the music. Uh, so, in order to try to please people, if I can and it feels right, I'll try th this out. There we go. Just like this here. There you go, just like this. All right, so let's um, let's remove a few um, tools from here. Uh, and uh, as usual, everything that's not finished, let's just put like a, a different like color, so we're um, we can concentrate on what's at hand, which is this mesh right here. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty like. I think there's like a little bit of like mid detail I can add in this, in this section here, but um, yeah, we're getting pretty much uh, at the point of adding details. Okay, so let's go with admit detail pass. It's going to be a section here where I'm going to do an extrusion, partial extrusion.
Okay, so that's kind of like um, I'm kind of like following the frame of the shape with this, but uh, right off the bat, I'm going to add some offsets. Or at least what I call offsets. So it's kind of like I just drawn the primary shape. Now I'm adding like secondary shapes into it, and then I'll add tertiary tertiary shapes. That is a tongue twister. Tertiary tertiary shapes. I think I got it. <laughs> All right. So yeah, and I'm I'm gonna sharp and blur my mask just to give it some like roundness. And then I'll add some lazy mouse to my mask. Simply to be able to do those lines here. Maybe a less bit, bit less wide. <laughs> I don't know if you heard somebody laugh in the background. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, let's go with that. Maybe another uh, blur and mask. Round this up a bit. And then uh, let's do a deformation, inflate. Okay, resolution is not in our favor for this. How much is that? How much polygon is that mesh? Two million. I mean, we could go to eight million. It's a, it's a pretty big piece <gasps> but I lose my mask uh, I should have tested that before hey thanks for the sub Lorenzo much appreciated okay 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 uh, yeah, let's just like redo it quickly. Let's subdivide this. Redo the mask. Like I already tested what I wanted, so just like once you've you've established what you're going for, often you just go much faster when it's time to to do it. Okay. Now it should be better. Mm. 
Maybe. Maybe these are too... Too small, after all. Whoops. Yeah, should be good. Okay, all right. All right. Now I'm not going to want to lose the, the mask just yet because I'm going to try to just make shapes inside of these. So I'm just like control clicking so that it kind of like shrinks the mask and I can uh, sharpen it afterwards. I actually get like uh, the shapes to reduce in size, but it does like follow like the topology as well. Since sometimes it can actually make some like some weird shapes. Hey, thanks for the sub. VX Leonardo, thank you, thank you, thank you, much appreciated. So it's the kind of stuff like you kind of like sometimes need to redo it by hand, or like fix it by hand a little bit. Once again, uh, for people uh, who watched for the first time, or just a reminder for others, uh, the goal of this exercise is to kind of like create like an high res uh not take too much time i mean th the process of doing something sci-fi is already a time consuming uh task right and the goal is to um not make it so time consuming so taking shortcuts um doing like some like quick polishing techniques instead of uh long arduous uh, techniques that sort of stuff. So I'm going to take the opportunity here to just smooth my edges a little bit. I don't want it to be so straight, so I'm going to use like the blur, the blurriness of the edges, like an kind of like a bevel. And I can also smooth this, but I, I think I don't mind that it's like hard edges for this one. So, uh, yep. Something like this. Happy Friday, Marco. How it goes. So much 3D. Hello, so much 3D. Uh, pretty good. It was a pretty intense week. Hence uh, why I almost didn't do a stream this week. But uh, I find the time today. Today it slowed down. So it's all good. It's all good. I feel like uh, things have been really freaking busy the, these last uh, weeks in so many ways. Uh, maybe that's too much in sets. Maybe just like an alpha here or something is going to be okay.
I've been streaming over a week. I feel like a major slacker, but clients and other work don't understand my streaming needs. <laughs> yeah, I get what you mean. I get what you mean. What's with all of these responsibilities? Luckily, <laughs> watching you work while I work is kind of like me being in the studio. Eh, here we go. There we go. That's good. Have you ever felt tricky, tricky or difficult because of normal issue on all of your small details when you make elaborate hard surface game character like Archangel? Sometimes when I look at your super high quality detail, how can I get a fine normal map without any trouble if I make them by myself? I mean, uh, how can you get nicely baked details? I don't understand the part where you say if you do it by yourself. What do you mean by that? Well, the old trick of taking the move brush, putting the focal shift at minus 100, then activating the black face mask. Very really good for making those kind of like those little parts that extrudes from the trim. Okay, we got the mid details here. We got this here, we got this here. I wonder if we should add some uh,
All right. I think I'll add a layer for um, what's coming this next. Uh, let's just check the chat also. Uh, I'm not sure that I can bake it perfectly. I haven't made game characters ever, so I just wondered that. I haven't made a game character at all, so... I don't know, anything you, you model, uh, you can bake on a game character. It's, uh... Yeah, it's pretty, like, magical what normal maps can do now. I think it's, like, harder when you get to, like, try to do that for displacement maps, though, but, um... No, for game character, it's, uh... It's pretty magical, I'd say. The only person in my follow channel that's not streaming Diablo. <laughs> hey, thanks for the sub, J Jacob. Do I get a sub because I'm not playing Diablo? <laughs> Quality content. <laughs> Thanks, man. If I purchased Diablo 4, uh, no, I, I did not. I did not. I am a bit, uh, I'm a bit too busy, let's say. I am playing a game right now, though. I'm uh, playing uh, the new Zelda, which is pretty freaking awesome. But that's pretty much the only thing. Uh, I don't have really much time otherwise.
go, there you go, what's next? Uh, but um, I like watching your workflow, especially to see your thought process on defining shapes, details, and shape language, which for me requires some iterative passes at time. But you, you just go with the flow and all that works. <laughs> well, I mean, I repeated things like a lot, right? So, um, like a lot of like what I do, especially in an, in a, an exercise like uh, like this one here. Uh, is uh, kind of like just going for like um, what I would consider maybe like the low hanging fruits of like my um, my uh, knowledge in uh, in uh, like sci-fi hard surface and that sort of stuff, right? Um, it's like the, I do like the thing that comes like the most naturally, let's say, without trying to really like uh, advance too much or. Uh, take too much risks and whatnot it's like um which um I, I hope it doesn't sound condescending because uh, the goal is just to say like i've practiced this so much that like for me it's it comes very very naturally let's say um and it will for anybody that uh practices that much sometimes you just you get some like go-to's if i can say
Mm, not like that. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, that's good.
All right, we're getting there. We're getting there. Slowly but surely. Mm, no, that's uh Let's check the chat a little bit. Sorry, I was a bit uh, in my head. Hey Marco, what is that brush you use? You use called standard for which one? This one? Oh, it's just a standard brush. It's really just a standard brush. 
just like kind of like named it something because at some point after an update I thought it like acted differently. But uh, as far as I know, it's it's really just the yeah the standard. Uh, did you ever try to implement the use of CAD software in your workflow? No, that never really interested me. Uh, do you have an idea as you approach each piece where it is going to go, or is it freeform and maintaining your own mental reference and matching the continuity of the rest of the model? Well, for this project, yes, that's that's the, the later one you said. It's more like the freeform kind of thing. But sometimes I do uh, make things that are kind of like mo much more planned, let's say. Uh, sometimes it depends uh, on the project. Like my my Four Horsemen, my Archangels, um, the Elementalists I'm working on right now, these are much more planned. Uh, it's secondary at this point for you. Um, hi, I have a question. I am a recent 3D artist graduate, and I was wondering if it's hard to land a job as a 3D junior modeler right now. Well, a character modeler or a, just like a 3D modeler, like a prop artist? This character is always harder for sure, yeah. Um, but, uh, I mean, the way that I see it, um, the... Um, the industry is kind of like booming in that sense. Um, and I think that like there's a lot of people going in this industry as well. And uh, I'm pretty sure like, you, you, I mean, it always depends on the, your amount of skills also, right? Like how much like people like value your work, but uh, it's uh, it can be hard. It's not like a, something like easy, like certain jobs, but I, I believe that there is so much like projects happening and everything that, uh, it's 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 uh it's absolutely feasible but you do have you do need to have the skills for sure it's it's a very competitive industry that won't change uh that won't change that hey marco how are you doing ah pretty good pretty good i hope you're doing good as well Just give me a sec.
Bam, bam, bam. Hey, Marco. Uh, did it. Bam, my two cents. Be patient, work hard, flesh out your portfolio, and tailor it towards what role or gig you want you're targeting. Yeah, that's pretty much it. That's well said. Um, uh, do you think Meta Human will change the game industry pipeline for characters? Uh, no. It's, I don't feel like Meta Human's able to do everything that's needed. But I mean, it's like things change all the time for sure. It's kind of, it's kind of like. Uh, like a lot of like he uh, scans are used for like heads and stuff. Um, so there are some like aspects that like like uh, huge shortcuts are like established. Let's say um, so this will happen for sure, right? But like uh, there are things that are not uh, yet like so automated and whatever. So uh, no, there's some. There's some stuff that doesn't change much. Huh, kind of like having a an issue here. Oh, there you go. Let's see if I can put that somewhere else. Uh, was there any moment to get angry at other artists or giving them pressure for the schedule? Sometimes I saw that kind of moment in my life, so I'm curious if you have that moment. What is your proper action? You mean if I ever got mad at an artist to follow a schedule? Um, no, getting mad is not really going to help uh, the situation. You might uh, turn off like your artist, scare him, make him feel insecure and stuff. Um, like if like that, if, if, if the art is fucked up, I mean, he has to know like how like his action led to like something that was not good. And there's like. there's like ways to make him like responsible for like what he did. If like truly like it's out of like his, that it's his, his fault. Right. But at the same time, I mean, the best thing you can do is just like give, give them like guidance to, to fix, um, let's say like the, the, their mistakes, if we can call them that. And, um, and yeah, and, and make them realize like what the, like the importance of like being responsible for these things and and that sort of stuff also like telling them like they did a good job like afterwards when they like get better at like what was the problem um i believe that's mostly like um that, that's a much better like uh it's a much better approach um getting angry is is not really gonna it's not really going to help in that situation.
All right, are we done with this uh, with this piece? There's a high probability of chances that the answer is yes. Thanks. I think that's good. Maybe let's try to find where to place those like little details somewhere in here. Yeah, let's go with that. Um, just uh, give me a second, I'll be back. Just a sec. I'm here, I am here. All right. One of my colleagues was getting huge stress from the lead, so I wonder how different and how other people respond to so, such a situation. Well, I mean, I did work with people that were very like um, didn't right didn't really have like the right approach um, when it came to like talk to artists and and that sort of stuff, and and um, it was pretty hard to to handle. Like I had some 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 clients who were very. Um, very hardcore and uh, and mean even so um yeah some sometimes uh, you just uh, yeah sometimes it happens you'll get uh, a challenging relationship which uh, it sucks it sucks when it happens.
All right, so I'm pretty much done with the central piece. So now I'm going to tackle like those like side uh, pieces here. Figuring out, figuring out the kind of like shape uh, I'm gonna want from this. Okay, let's see if I can introduce a, a capsule shape here, make it fit. It's gonna start from a nice primary shape. Oops. Get my trusty transpose line. Hey, thanks for the follow. So yeah, uh, while I was blocking the shape, I was just trying to figure out like kind of like um, a shape that I am that I enjoy, like a and really like at its most primitive level. Like you see, it's kind of like a I la landed on, landed on this uh, capsule shape, and uh, now that I have this, uh, it's easier for me to. Um, well, I mean, sorry. What I mean is. When I was doing the blocking, I was looking for a shape, and I kind of like ended up drawing a capsule shape. But now that it's time to make it cleaner, well, I can just like easily just start from like a real capsule shape and go from there. Like I don't need to to to, to sculpt 
my blocking so it looks like it looks like a capsule shape. There you go. So I guess all in all, if I talk about my experience of working with the uh, dynamic subdivision, I'd say that it's, I'm really happy that this tool exists. But once again, I have to talk about the fact that not being able to use the clip curve, like now I'm not using a uh, dynamic subdivision on this, so I can use clip curve. But like the fact that I can use, I cannot use like clip curve and that sort of stuff. It's really a pain in the ass, I find. Like I, I'm... It's a tool I use like pretty regularly and it's just like really, it's annoying to not being able to, to use it. So uh, yeah, all in all, it's, uh, it's nice, but uh, I'm really hoping that they're going to add the, um, the missing parts. So I'll put another tube in there. Should I just take something I already created? Do I have one on the fly? Um, yeah, I guess. This kind of thing, maybe.
Okay, I'm gonna add a layer here just in case. I'm kind of like just considering if like I do print it's getting to be like a lot of like cavities here in this area I think I'll still do it I'll just adapt it for print if I ever um, sell this STL ooh a little raid look at that look at that ah, je me fais raid uh, FX sculpteur C'est pas mal gentil, merci. It's very nice of you. Thank you, thank you. Bien le bonjour. Très gentil de m'avoir envahi comme ça. <laughs> Okay, all right. So you see like that piece, like I'm already liking it, this little thing on the side, that's cool. I'll just have to figure out some of the internal shapes of that thing and... Ooh, how did this happen? Okay, we're good. Still not enough resolution. Subdivide one more time. I wonder if that would look well in black, this part here. Yep, 
Yeah, that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Boom, et voilà. Ok. Good, 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 good.
Okay, I think that's gonna work. Let's keep it that for the moment. Let's concentrate on the other piece. So this one, see, I could like just, well, first of all, I think I'm gonna just split it into its own uh, sub tool. So it's easier to to manipulate. And I think uh, oh, subdivide, maybe like a dynamesh, I think it's gonna be enough. Yeah, it's kind of like a gross mesh, so I think I'm going to need to maybe clean it a bit. Let's check double-sided. By the way, thanks for the follow. Let's do something like this. Oh, maybe that's too much. There we go. Let's remove part of that like this. Delete. Let's select by border and kind of like flatten this whole edge like this. Now I can close this and it's clean. Subdivide, Dynamesh, let's go 2000 this time. And I could Z remesh that thing. Reproject and we're good. So sometimes I'm going to harden my edges like this, um, but I'm going to round them down by smoothing afterwards. I just find that like if you have a well-defined like facet, it's uh, it's much easier by uh, afterwards to um, to smooth it out and or at least like if the goal is to make like um like a rounded edge. It's easier if you start from like a very defined edge because like everything that's round, like except for like maybe like a, um, a perfect circle, everything that's round, like every curves, they, they still have like an like an apex, if I can, I can say, where it's like the curve almost feels like there, it has like a corner inside of it, but it's just it's been rounded so much. And um yeah, I f like this is like a, something I pay attention to when I do like circles and stuff like that, or let's say like ellipses. Let's let's say. And uh, yeah, I feel it's something important to consider. So, and also just like the, the technique of like defining your edges correctly and then smoothing them out, I find is um, uh, like the best to get the best results too. So it 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 it. It helps you to pay attention to the um, to really like like your planes, let's say your your the, the facetization of your shape, and uh, it makes it easier to smooth and get round corners afterwards.
Hey, thanks for the follow. Okay, so like most angles feel pretty good for the moment. All right, that's cool. I am so far happy with the results. That was the clay brush to make those bevels like this. Sometimes, it, sometimes the the mesh has a hard time doing the bevel. Uh, most of the time, it works pretty good. I just have to fix the curve here a bit. Well, just the outside of the curve. Okay. 
let's subdivide this, add a few details on this as well. Okay, it should be all right. And that's good for this side. Now on the other side. So I can actually try to go in the kind of like the same vein where like I'll start from like a primitive shape that kind of looks like what I was doing here, which looks like a um once again, kind of like a capsule shape, but like a flat capsule shape. Uh, let's save also. I haven't saved uh, since the beginning of that stream. I'm playing with fire. While it's saving, I'll just check something. All right. Hi, Marco. Everything okay? Have you already bought Final Fantasy uh, 15, 16? Uh, no, I've stopped playing Final Fantasy after uh, the 10th one. Uh, I did play uh, the remake of uh, the 7th. But uh, I haven't really played, uh, like I didn't play 10-2, and I haven't played also the uh, 
the ones afterwards. Uh, some of my friends did continue to play, and they actually told me like there are like a few uh, that are um, pretty pretty good. Um, but the whole thing, like um, the moment it's like multiplayer for me, I'm just like not interested anymore. Like I'm a I'm a pretty competitive person, but um, I video games for me they're like a, a way to kind of like be in my bubble and and forget about the world. So like I stopped playing uh multiplayers a long time ago so the moment like you you start like you talk about like a, a game like a multiplayer like what some of the final fantasies are or at least the most recent ones for me right there i'm just like rough not super interested and, and not because like i'm sure the game is good but it's just like i don't know like uh, the last elder scroll that i played was uh skyrim because just the online idea for me it's not working with my uh what i'm looking for in my video games like um even the stuff like uh uh elden ring or like dark souls like i've always turned like the the network thing off and stuff i'm just really not interested um by the idea of like having like other players come in my game now. because it's like no player is gonna really like enhance the flow of the game and stuff like i see it such as like a disruption and you could say like oh that's the fun of it but no i don't like it i'd rather have like an, a super hardcore boss than a, a fight with another dude FF16 is going to be a solo game? Oh yeah, really. I wasn't really I re didn't really like keep informed about it. So um well good. If it's a solo um well I'll, I'll probably just play if the, the 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 critiques are good to be honest. But uh but yeah, no, it's a good uh it's a good start. Good start. <laughs> Now I just have to modify the uh, the shape here so it fits with the rest of the the line flow around it. kind of works if I also taper it a bit like this.
Okay, I think I don't need the blocking anymore. I'll just do with that. Uh, what the? Oh yeah, that was just like a, a placeholder. Okay, let's see if I clip curve it and dynamesh like this. Or, hmm, wait, maybe. Yeah, you see like those lines are there aligning well and stuff. There's just like some things to arrange and uh but it's a good start. I can even maybe look at um having this uh edge not not hard but like more rounded like this. Yeah. Works well. Cool. Okay. All right, cool. I think I'm going to commit to do, to this shape. I'm going to apply the the resolution. So I want to put like a little detail, make sure I have enough resolution. Yeah, resolution's good. So let's put a layer and try. So I have this kind of like tube thing here. Oops. Too much. Yeah, orientation's a bit off. Let's try this. Ah, smack down on it. Perfect. Okay, cool.
me right off the bat, I'll add some like cavities to that because I kind of like created some by accident here. So let's just use this as an epi accident and plan on adding those, those cavity lines here. Oh, I didn't read that question. Have you seen Starfield from Bethesda? It does look promising. Uh, no, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen that either. I'll have to look. Hello, Mr. Chaos. Hello there, Handy Nippet. Jeff Simpson. Marco, do you ever think about Nova sometimes? <laughs> I was going to ask, like, is it the Jeff Simpson that I know? Uh, funny, I talked about that yesterday, actually. Yeah, I I thought about that project uh, yesterday. I was talking about it, but I am um, what I what I also said about this project is how I'm actually kind of like, in a sense, like nostalgic and like happily nostalgic, I guess, to to have seen like some of it, kind of like exist in the uh, the last Guardians of the Galaxy game. Like it did really, it was really reminiscing to like some of the stuff we've uh, we've worked on, uh, but I, I get like super nostalgic about the um, like the time and the project itself, also the team and everything. That was uh, that was that was great. That was so cool to be honest. For spoken, yeah, I, I kind of like have to to check that game out a bit more because uh, I've seen maybe like a trailer of it, but um, I think or maybe just like an image or something because it, it didn't actually like I didn't actually um, notice that, um, but I think it's really just because I haven't looked at at the game uh, enough. Um, I haven't played it. Also, um, I don't even know if it's uh, it's recommended. Actually, I've I've been really out of the loop in terms of like what game. Uh, should be played like uh except for for for, for Zelda right <laughs> nah it's it's great I heard it's not great ah oh, okay ah oh, boy yeah that sucks man just the idea of working years on a project and it turns out not being good it's it's so like heartbreaking it's so heartbreaking I think when you're creating a game that long you kind of like have to I like disconnect yourself a little bit to not like get hurt by it, I guess. I thought Chaos Masons were two artists. Yeah, Chaos Ma well, no, Chaos Mason is the name of a co of an outsourcing studio founded by two people. And right now, one of them is doing a live stream for you. Yeah. 
it's funny because the idea is kind of like proposing that like we're never allowed to, to be not together, the two artists. <laughs> like, where's Cedric right now? Like, I'm sorry, we don't live together. <laughs> You know what, I don't think I like those, those cavity lines, actually. Maybe they should, they should just disappear more quickly. Like, eh, no, not like this. Not like this. I remember the dinner when the same, when the name Kiosk Masons was first pitched. <laughs> Ooh, back in the day, back in the day. That's cool. I like that you have a memory of that, Jeff. So where is the other one? Ah, well, I guess he's at home right now. No, I don't like that it's open like this. At Baton Rouge. Oh, damn. That, you have a good memory, man. I I would never in a million year have remembered this. But I, um, I, 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 I think I do remember the moment. I do remember going there with the gang, like, once in a while. So uh, that I, I, of course, uh, of course, remember that. <laughs> I was talking about bottles and now I want to have ribs. Uh, it's soon, it's soon my birthday and my mom said she would cook ribs for my birthday. So there you go. I'm already in line to get ribs. Yes. Don't worry, the rest is a blur. <laughs> How does it work? Both of you work on the same character or more like a collab? Um, man, that's that's a loaded question. We're an outsourcing studio. We hire people to work with us on many projects. We're mostly our directors and business managers. 
at this point in the company. And when we work on characters, we work uh, mostly on personal projects and uh, we each work on our own uh, stuff. That's uh, that's pretty much the the dynamic. Oops. By the way, Jeff, how have you been doing? I haven't gotten news from you for a while. As an art director, all that matters is the end result. Question mark. Uh, poof, I, I'm not. Sh I'm not sure what you, what you mean. What you're asking. Doing okay, just joined a new studio from ex Halo developers. Back with Martin de Chambeau as the. Oh, yeah, cool. X343, yeah. No, yeah, I get what you mean. Wait, did I hear about that studio? Huh. Did, did they announce like uh, the name or anything? I don't want to ask you to say something you, you should not be saying, but uh, is, is, is there like a name or an announcement? Stuff to come? Just curious. Jar of Sparks is the student name. That's a cool name. <laughs> well, that's pretty cool, man. I wish you good luck with uh, all that stuff, eh? But too early for anything beyond that. Based in Redmond. Right next to three for three. Sorry, where where's Redmond? Seattle. Geez, Seattle. Oh yeah. Did you move or you're uh, you're remote? Remote in Vancouver. I didn't want to bother with Visa. Mm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I see what you mean. But it's 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 crazy, man, that you're you're in Vancouver. Hey, you know what, dude? I might actually uh, come to Vancouver in September. So uh, I'll give you a shout out, I guess. I actually don't like know anybody in Vancouver. Yeah, I'll definitely do that. That's cool, man. I'm happy to. I'm happy to hear that. So yeah, um, the um, 
So uh, and Andy Nepet, you were asking, uh, you hire other artists which might not work the same way as you do. So an art director, all that matters is the end result. Um, um, I'd say mostly, yeah. I, I'd say that would be that would be a, a fair assessment. Um, but like a lot of the time, people they need guidance. Uh, we're we're me and Cedric were making sure that like um, the the art direction of the the clients is 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 followed. We also put our own input and style on it sometimes uh, in in what we're asking people to do right uh we show people how to how to do it and that sort of stuff and at a certain point while well, the most artists become like pretty um autonomous uh, let's say uh, but uh yeah so it's like a form of like supervision in that sense making sure everything is up to a certain standard that sort of stuff but we're like not we're trying to also not like micromanage everything we let people like have like the the liberty to do things their own way with their own software if possible but most of the time like the client will be asking a certain software so that they can in the future like kind of like maybe like open the file and fix some stuff or whatever so but it, it, it all it ends up like being most of the time just the same software anyways so and it's all like the like the industry uh the industry uh standards right it's never like anything uh too funky no? Jeez, I'm having a hard time having this shape clean. Or maybe I'm just too picky. That should be okay, I guess. <sighs> or it's more important to mimic your style. Um, no, because this, the the, um, the the artists, they always have their own style. Like Even like artists that came to us and say, like, oh, we want to... Like we want your style. We want you to put your style. Uh, one hundred percent of the time, it always ended up like us changing to fit actually what they want. It's kind of like I don't know. It's okay. Well, I mean, I did work on some projects where like they they wanted my style and they got it. Um, but like as like a, a studio with like a big production, again, most of the time, yeah. Like it, at some point, like they need to have things like with a certain art direction and um and uh it, it end up not looking like our style which uh which can be frustrating in a sense that being asked that and then like getting and it being removed and stuff but we just figured out that's the nature of things um so now when somebody asks us for our style we we know not to like we know that like it, it's more important to understand what they need than just like blindly doing like in quotes our style
All right, it's advancing well. Yeah, I'm getting rid of that that line right there. All right, cool, back on track. So it's been two hours and a half that I'm doing this. I think I'm gonna stop after I'm done with the, with the forearm. And I'll leave the, uh, the arm for uh, Next stream. The arm's probably going to take two streams, I'm thinking, because uh, hands are pretty complex. Sorry, I said arm. I meant hand. Yeah, the hand's going to be complex. I'm going to try to reuse the fingers, the same fingers as the, the Migawawa, the dog that I have on the left of my screen, to save up some time. We'll see. So I'll try to add like a cavity line here. But not not everywhere though.
Yeah, the line actually works kind of like well in some areas where like I thought it shouldn't. But still I'm not gonna have it everywhere. Like I don't want I don't want it back there. Hi Marco, just a small question. When you're doing all this small part detailing, do you do in dynamic subdiv or the actual subdiv mode? Uh, well, on the subdiv because the dynamic subdiv is um, it, like it would put the detail on the lowest like level, which um, would not be able to take the detail. Like right now, I'm at seven levels of subdivision on this mesh. Not that like the the number seven matters. I'm just saying. I'm just showing you. I have subdivisions. The amount of subdivision is relative to your base uh, base topology. So uh, yeah, it's relative. Okay, do I have enough details? I I don't like that line here either. Jesus, let's get rid of it. Yeah, it's better like this. I'm gonna try one last thing, I think. I see, thank you, no problem. No problem.
Hmm. Uh, maybe not. Down there it works though. Not this one here. How sad. Yeah, I kind of think that's good. A little detail there is going to help. Uh, I think I'm going to leave it to that. Cool. I think that will be good. So let's see everything as a whole. All right, and there's just the hand that is left and we'll have we'll have this finished. So yeah, and just to envision a little bit what it's gonna when it's gonna give for the final result. I'm just gonna save that, but I'm also going to duplicate and put it on the other side. Thank you, thank you. All right, so let's, let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to load another scene. Well, the same one, but the, another instance of it. Okay. So everything that's here, I want it to collapse into one object, but I have to get rid of everything that's a dynamic subdivision first, because it's not gonna merge correctly. So I have to apply all my dynamic subdivisions So I'm just going through all the subtools with the arrow keys. Oh, that's it. Just a double check. Yeah, okay. Um, and then I just have to make sure I don't have like a layer that's in recording mode. Or else it's, uh, oh yeah, there we go. Or else it's gonna be black when it's um, merged. Should be good. Let's um, 
merge visible. So it created one mesh for this entire arm. Now doing a merge visible of so many tools, sometimes it can uh, make the computer crash, but I'm pretty certain this mesh is not high enough for that. Yeah, like the mesh is 25 million, which is not recommended for a size for like a mesh that you're working on, but just a mesh to be there um, for visualization. It's fine. Mirror. Boom. All right, and now we can visualize it on both sides. Yeah, that's cool. I'm happy of that. Uh, I'm happy with that project. I just wonder if the feet are are black instead of uh, that that blue. Okay, why? Doesn't it want the split? Yeah, I'll leave it like this with the pause black instead of blue. I think it's a uh, I think it's better. All right. Cool, 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 cool. I think I'll save it like this also. Yes, it's not, not not that much of a heavy project. Before I duplicated the arm on the other side, it was right now it was 1 gigabyte for everything. So it's like, you see, it's not like a super, yeah, heavy, um, like highly, highly, highly micro detail kind of stuff. It's like mostly just like to look good, like in this, um, like distance of the character, let's say. It's not like meant necessarily for close ups and that sort of stuff. But uh, yeah, no, it's going to, it's going to, it's going to look good. I think uh, I'll be happy with that. I I would they had plug in to apply all dynamics. Oh, they probably have. Probably have. Oh, you said you you wish they had plugins for yeah. Yeah. They probably have, I guess. Chris Harto. Thank you, thank you. Awesome work. Thanks, Ash and Air. And the Epet. I can't wait to see you animate it. <laughs> there ain't going to be any animation on that. <laughs> so yeah, there you go. You got it. Uh, I did just save, right? Correct? Yeah, I did just save. So uh, that'll be all. A little two hour, 45 minutes. Ooh, it was a little bit uh, longer than uh, than usual. Um, so yeah, cool. I'm happy that I found the time to, uh, to stream this week. That was great. A little way to finish uh, Friday. That's nice. Um, awesome. So look, thanks for uh, joining once again. Um, next week, I'll tackle the, the hand 
and uh, and yeah and once it's done like I, I was thinking of like how i'm going to render it and stuff but i think i'm kind of like interested to use the same technique as i did before with um with the um uh with arnold and uh and max so uh yeah we'll see we'll see about that that's like where i'm leaning right now and i think i'm probably gonna also gonna re-render the megawa megawawa so it's kind of like similar to the um to this one it's like the megawawa is uh, is this guy here and uh that's like a mix of uh key shot and photoshop uh but i only get like one angle so i'm thinking maybe uh re-rendering the Megawawa with the new technique so I can do like a turntable and all that, that fun stuff. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, merci pour le stream. Ben, ça fait plaisir. Fait plaisir. Uh, Lorenzo, cool, cool. Well, thanks. I appreciate that. So anyways, yep. Yeah, uh, thanks everyone for joining. I'll uh, see you next week. And until then, I wish you um, fortune and fame and happiness and everything. There you go. <laughs> all right. Take care.